This is video 21 in our series uh, Topics in Tensor Analysis. A reminder that the playlist for the videos is at the website digital-university.org. In uh, this video we're going to examine the Christoffel symbol and see if it actually transforms um, according to the properties of a tensor. So before we do that let's just briefly review uh, remember in the past videos when we had a, uh, a curvilinear coordinate system, say with curvilinear axis u1 and u2 and u3, and there's a certain point in space that's located with those axes, we could also locate that point with a position vector on a Cartesian coordinate system. And just a reminder because here we are going to display just two general curvilinear coordinate systems. This is u and u prime. So we have u1, u2, u3, and so forth. Then over here it'd be u u prime one, u prime two, u prime three, and so forth. And the tangential vectors for each one of these coordinate axis is found by taking the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to that particular coordinate axis at that particular um, point in space. And then in the U prime system we'll be taking the partial of the position vector with respect to one of the U prime coordinate axis. And then in the past videos we also had talked about reciprocal vectors. So if this is a tangential vector, this would be its orthogonal counterpart. And we obtain these by taking the gradient of each one of these coordinate axes. Or over here, it would be taking the gradient of each one of the uh, U prime axis. And then in video number seven, I believe it was, we determined that if we know a tangential vector here in the unprime system, we can find the expression for the tangential vector in the prime system with these set of equations. And likewise, for the orthogonal counterpart of the tangential vector, if we know what it is in the unprime system, the U system, then we can determine what it is in the prime system with this set of equations, and these we had derived, I think, in um, video number 10. Okay, now remember that a couple of videos ago we had again, each tangential vector is the partial derivative of the position vector with respect to one of the curvilinear coordinate axes. Then a couple of videos ago what we did was we took the partial derivative of the tangential vector with respect to one of the coordinate axes. Or that would be the same thing as taking the second derivative. Since we're taking the partial of EI, but EI is this, that's the same thing as taking the second derivative of the position vector. But here then is where we introduce the concept of Christoffel symbols. So the basic equation was the partial derivative of a tangential vector with respect to one of the coordinate axes equals this. Now, if we take the dot product of both sides of this equation with E uppercase K, that dot that is just one, so we just have this, and on this side of the equation we'd have this dot e uppercase k. So this would be one of the um, orthogonal um, counterparts to a tangential vector. Okay, and then from what we just discussed from previous videos is that here we have these equations that relate a tangential vector from the unprime system and the prime system, or not the tangential vector, its orthogonal counterpart in the unprime system and the prime system. If 
follows this equation. And again, we derived this back in video 10. And then the tangential vectors, if we note in the unprimed system, and the unprimed system, we find it with this equation. And this we derived in video number 7. So here, then, is basic equation for a Christoffel symbol. This is in the unprimed system. That would be here. Now, if we were in the U prime system, then it would be not E k, but E prime k, dot product partial of E prime with respect to U prime. Now, here, E prime k, though, we can find with this equation. So, in our basic definition, we can substitute this for this. That's what we did. We wrote it down here. Then take the dot product, the partial with u prime j of e prime i. But e prime i is this. So I'm going to substitute that in. And we have it right here. So we're taking the partial of u prime j of this. Because this is this. So what we have this is the expression then for the Christoffel symbol in the prime system once we made those different substitutions and let's look at the last term here we have the partial of EL with respect to U prime J well if we had the partial of EL that's the tangential vector. I'm not going to write the bar above them um, anymore for the rest of this video. But if we had the partial of tangential vector EL, say with respect to UM, then if we wanted to, we could write this as a Christoffel symbol of L, M, and then have some kind of repeating index. We don't have it like this. It's with respect to u prime j. But what we can do is use the chain rule. So we could say, well, the partial of EL, again, not writing the bars anymore, with respect to u prime j could equal the partial um with respect to u prime j then the partial of el with respect to um that's just using the chain rule and then this if we wanted to again we could write as a Christoffel symbol we won't do it yet but what we will do is, for this, we're going to substitute this. So let's do that right here. Take this out and write this in in its place, if we have enough room. Partial of UM with respect to U prime J. And the partial of EL with respect to UM. OK, now let's see what we have. We're taking the dot product of this with this term and then this with this term. Now, if we do it, let's say for the first term here, what we have here is E, not writing the bar in, E dot EL. These are reciprocal basis vectors. So that's going to equal delta L 
n. And this is 0 unless n equals l. Then it becomes 1. So when we take this dot product, what we're going to have is this will equal, we'll have this term, u prime k with respect to un. Then we have this term, partial squared of ul. Then we have u prime j, the partial with respect to u prime i. Then here we have this dot product, which is delta l n. And that is always 0 unless l is equal to n, in which case it is 1. So this is 0 unless l is equal to n. Then it becomes 1. So the effect is that this n is now going to become an l. n has to be l, and that's equal to 1. So this becomes an l. Now we're just multiplying it by 1, otherwise we're multiplying it by 0 when l and n are not equal. So when we take the dot product of the first term here, we get this expression. Now, let's take a look over here. We're going to take the dot product of this with this. OK, here what we can do is we will have this term, partial u prime k, with respect to un, this term and this term, that the u prime i and this term, the partial of u m, and then we have partial with respect to u prime j, and now this term. We're taking the dot product of this with this. So we have it like partial of E L with respect to U M dot E N. But now here we can write this with the Christoffel symbol. It'd be gamma L M E with some repeated index, and let's call it n, because here we have this, well, this is just this. We just use our Christoffel symbol now. Now we'll take the dot product of it with en. But this, of course, is just going to be delta n n set always equals 1. So this is just going to be 1. So the result is when we take this dot product, what we get is the Christoffel symbol, delta or gamma L M N. So we put that right here. Going back to where we were now, we were taking the dot product of this with this. And we got this. So let's write it in. L, M, N. And what is this equal to? That was the Christoffel symbol in the prime system. So here's our final expression. Well, notice, now if we look at this closely, we'll see that here, this, well, our Christoffel symbol has both 
it'd be a third rank tensor because it has over here it has three components covariant ones and contravariant ones so it'd be a mixed tensor now let's suppose that this didn't exist if that wasn't there we would have this expression from this term then here here. That's ignoring this term, if this did not exist. Well, if that wasn't there, this would be a perfect setup. Because look how it is. Here, again now, this is, we're taking partials with respect to u prime and with respect to u. So here, we're taking partials, we're in the prime system. This would be taking partials with respect to u prime. One partial will have the i label, one partial with respect to u prime will have the j label. And if this now is transforming like a tensor on this side of the equation, the u primes that have the i label and the j label, these are subscripts, so they should be appearing in the denominator on this side of the equation, and indeed they do. Now here, we're in the unprimed system, so we're taking partials with respect to u. Oh yes, and with the k, here we have, this would be a partial of u prime with respect to, with the k label. This is a superscript, so that should appear in the numerator on the other side of the equation, and indeed it does. Now here, this is a subscript, we're taking partials now with respect to u. We're in the u system, not in the prime system anymore. So with the u label, now on here, on this side, we have the repeated indexes, if indeed it's a true tensor. So the u label, or the partial of u, one carrying an l label, one carrying an m label, these are repeated indexes. So here, if they're covariant, if they're downstairs here, they have to be upstairs on this side of the equation, and indeed they are. So we have our repeated indexes. Same thing for here. The partial of u that carries the n label, that should be down in the denominator, and there it is. So it is, it is a repeated index. So if we only had this term, then indeed the Christoffel symbols would be transforming just as a tensor does. But we don't have that because we have this extra term right here. So therefore, the Christoffel symbol does not transform like a tensor. Therefore, the Christoffel symbol is not a mixed uh, third order tensor. And this is a theme that we're going to come across in the next couple of videos, and this will lead us then right down the path into uh, covariant differentiation. Anyway, that's it for this video. Um, come back and join us in the next video, and we're going to consider not just transformation of vectors, as we talked about in previous videos, but what happens when you take derivatives of the components of vectors? How do those transform? So. Come back and join us for that video, and then we'll continue along here with our discussion.